Hey guys, welcome to another RL Craft video, and boy do I have a special one for you guys today. I have been playing RL Craft version 2.9 a lot recently, and I can say beyond a shroud of a doubt that I have a great handle on the new version now and can give you an unbiased review of how I feel about this major update. Before getting into the more specific points on what I want to talk about in this video, I will say that I personally find 2.9 RL Craft to be absolutely amazing in so many ways. And in this short video, I will try to convince those that may be a bit scared of RL Craft 2.9 being too difficult of why this update is such a drastic and revolutionary step in the right direction for RL Craft, and honestly, all difficult mod packs that are out to date. Let's get right into it. First off, I'm going to address the elephant in the room. The main two reasons many players are afraid of RLCraft 2.9 is now how long it takes to legitly obtain the same OP items that you got used to using in the previous versions of RLCraft, and the fact that you can't cheese certain enemies to the point that they might as well not even exist. And those same fears were also my fears at first. Many crafting recipes were changed, forcing the player to fish, or enter the nether or end before they can craft certain strong items. And indeed, you can no longer just fish massive stone monsters off a tower with a thin piece of string and a stick anymore. This seems tough on paper, I know, but let me explain why this is a good thing. In the previous versions of RLCraft, there were only one or two correct ways to play, and if you didn't play that way, you were pretty much just considered a noob by everyone. If you didn't care about being called a noob and you just liked having fun, then you're probably not one of the people complaining about RLCraft version 2.9 in the first place. Regardless though, I digress. You in the past in RLCraft were forced to make a summoning staff alongside avian treats or beast treats, a saddle, and a soul stone as quickly as possible, and then after that you pretty much beat the game, because while well, you fly everywhere and get everything you need safely in the overworld. Plus, when you need to fight, you have powerful summon minions that destroy everything without you having to lift a finger. Yeah. And, and don't worry, I did it too, trust me. But when I think about it, when someone plays RLCraft version 2.8.2 and prior, the quote-unquote efficient ways, then vanilla Minecraft starts to look pretty difficult in comparison. Because at least there, you're forced to go into the nether to get blaze rods. Isn't RLCraft supposed to be... difficult? And you're absolutely right. Even if RLCraft wasn't difficult, there are still plenty of things that makes the mod pack so incredibly enjoyable. The biomes to explore, the new monsters to fight, structures to explore... I feel like the strongest and most meta-minded RLCraft players, though, started to take for granted how beautiful RLCraft is as a mod pack, and just started to look for ways to make it easier. I think that I fell into that category for a while. RLCraft 2.9 not only makes us re-explore the world on foot, on boat, on hippogriff, on amphitheater, but it makes us have more things to do, period. You can grind on your flying mount for a few hours on RLCraft 2.8 and prior, and you're already ready to fight the final bosses and have everything you could ever need. But now, it is a bit more like a genuine RPG experience. It takes a bit more of a grind. But wait, before you get afraid of the word grind, what people seem to forget is that you don't have to grind if you don't want to grind. On a multiplayer server, sure, you usually have to, but I would say, and don't check my math on this, but over 99% of RLCraft players don't play on multiplayer servers all the time. RLCraft is a difficult adventure that is supposed to be difficult, but for those players that don't want to bang their heads against the wall all day and just want to ride dragons scorching the landscape or one-shot all the frightening lycanite creatures that bullied them when they first started out RLCraft, well, they still can. Creative mode and opening the world to land is something that I personally have gotten a lot of enjoyment out of. Don't get me wrong, I still play on survival the vast majority of the time, but honestly speaking, I use the help of creative mode to test all the new features that RLCraft 2.9 has to offer on stream, and I enjoyed every minute of it. Even the ridiculous deaths were hilarious to me, because I would just go into creative mode after I died and looked at all the BS that happened that led to my death. Every person who plays video games plays them for different reasons. It's unreasonable to want other players to play exactly the way you want to play. In RLCraft 2.9, there honestly is not a correct way to beat the game within the short time frame. 
it's nearly impossible to try. Sure, you can still make dragon armor with protection on it super easily within a few hours of playing, but beating the final bosses will take considerably longer, and getting full fire resistance by crafting the dragon's eye isn't nearly as efficient as just making some potions of fire resistance now. In RLCraft 2.9, we are not forced to play a certain way anymore. The game is not speed runnable to the same extent that it used to be, so we don't have to worry about that. I mean, sure, you still can speedrun it if you want, but expect your time to be potentially doubled. RLCraft 2.9 slows down speedrunners, but it gives such an incredibly vast and beautiful experience to everyone else. When you craft the Potion Ring of Speed, it means something. You now move faster and can explore faster. When you craft Splash Potions of Levitation to cross creeks, to float up battle towers, you feel as though you're using your brain to achieve greatness. Now when you finally ride that stupid little turd bird, you know that you worked your butt off to do it, and you genuinely deserve all the massive benefits that having a convenient mount has to offer. The same can be said with many other super strong items, you have to work for it. No. Better yet, you get to re-enjoy RLCraft again. The hard work from our first grind. Do you remember that? Your first makeshift base, a small little wheat farm, a small little mine, no idea what to do next but you're just excited that you get to do it? I remember. And those were some of the best moments I have ever had in RLCraft. In all of Minecraft even. Now though, many of us are more experienced. Sure, the grind won't be quite as tough, but the rewards will feel so much more sweet because we worked considerably harder to get them. Sure, it may feel frustrating never finding a golden bookworm or never getting that Neptunian ingot, but if you want things to just get handed to you, you can still just cheat them in. Do you want to give yourself a stone of the sea bobble at the start of our railcraft so you can breathe underwater without working for it? Nothing is stopping you but yourself. Or, well, the multiplayer server rules. But either way, RLCraft 2.9 is such an incredible improvement over RLCraft 2.8. So many new items, enemies to fight, places to see, weapons to craft, things to do, bosses to fight, secrets to uncover, transformation rings to use, locks to break, and you still can get just as strong as before by grinding out librarians in villages, for example. RLCraft 2.9 is not impossible, and it isn't even that much more insanely difficult compared to before. After learning many tips and tricks, I can say confidently that RLCraft 2.9 is very much beatable and it honestly is so much better than it was before. Yeah, if you want to play in survival, it's going to feel hard at first, and sure, it will probably be very annoying for even the most veteran of players on a hardcore playthrough, but this is our Relcraft. We're not playing vanilla. We willingly signed up for this, and I wouldn't want it any other way. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. I know it was a bit of a different style. I plan on making some tips and tricks videos, how to be OP in RLCraft 2.9 videos, and all that stuff, especially when the official release is out to everyone publicly. But for now, I hope this video appealed to you guys. I took down my last 2.9 video because some of the information wasn't the best, partially because the version I downloaded was very buggy and it was entirely my own research, but that is neither here nor there. RLCraft 2.9 version 6 is so incredibly smooth and I haven't found any bugs yet. If you want to play RLCraft version 2.9 yourself, the instructions are in the description. Just a heads up though, RLCraft 2.9 is still in beta and being worked on, so the things you saw on screen in this video are not guaranteed to be the same for the official release. With that out of the way though, let me know your thoughts in the comments of this video on 2.9 RLCraft if you have any. The changes are honestly so amazing and I urge you to give it an honest chance. If you want something, you have to actually go out and get it. It feels much more like Terraria and other phenomenal exploration type grinding games, even more than it did before, and that is certainly a positive to me. RLCraft being a unique experience that still gives us that rush of satisfaction for achieving the difficult is really a great thing, and 2.9 does a great job at making us feel that again. I hope you enjoyed this video. Bye bye